Well, I think uh, I wrote the synchrotron song, words at least, in uh, 19, early 1980s. And uh, it was used in the first of the lunchtime uh, shows or reviews that I put on for the laboratory audience uh, in the lecture theater at the laboratory. And that was on the 17th of February, 1983. It was called On the Lighter Side, and I remember being assisted a little bit in that by Gordon Foster of the laboratory staff. And then it got airings at subsequent of these uh, lunchtime shows and went on to entertain folk at the annual user meetings of the synchrotron radiation source. These were usually held on two days of meetings, and during the night or the evening of the day of the night between, um, we put on what was called a cabaret, and often the synchrotron song featured there. And I remember one year we'd got hold of an arrangement somebody had volunteered of it into barbershop style, and we had four singers who enjoyed singing a version for barbers barbershop quartet which uh, seemed to go down rather well. Um, subsequently, uh, the Synchrotron song hasn't had much uh, of an airing. Um, it uh, has come back a little bit just on the 50th anniversary we've been celebrating this year, 2012, of the foundation of the Darsbury Laboratory and was given another performance on that occasion. So I'm glad to put down yet Another recording, this time especially for posterity, of that said synchrotron song. Um, it's possibly of interest to know that the tune and the words were written about 25 years apart because I originally was setting somebody else's words, a theologian um, whose words were of Gilbertian style, and I was making a tune which I thought was rather in the manner of Sullivan. Uh, his, uh, his poem was called Constructive Theology, but this one is called The Synchrotron Song. And uh, it makes use of some acronyms which I could just mention uh, for those who might find it helpful. CW stands for Continuous Wave. SRS, of course, stands for Synchrotron Radiation Source. S-A-W is surface acoustic wave. A-D-E-S, pronounced AIDS, is uh, angularly dispersed electron spectroscopy. And EDCs are energy distribution curves. So I'm afraid there's that bit of a gobbledygook acronyms have uh, crept into the verses so it becomes a bit of a specialized song in that sense. Anyway, here goes with the synchrotron song. <clears throat> It's nowadays acknowledged that electron storage rings produce enormous quantities of brilliant light which springs from fast electrons passing through magnetic fields dipolar whilst guided on their orbit by a smart machine controller. A smart machine controller, magnetic fields dipolar, create a radiation that's competitive with solar. This light unique has properties that put it far ahead of any other light source from X-ray to infrared. The photon flux is fabulous, it's bright beyond compare, and almost every wavelength you could want is present there. Most every wavelength's there and bright beyond compare. Such very strong continua are really rather rare. When carefully examined in the temporal domain, this light is not CW but issues as a train of periodic pulses on the nanosecond scale, whose amplitude and phase stay fixed in very great detail. These flashing lights avail where other sources fail, the pinnacles of time resolve spectroscopy to scale. 
this catalogue of properties would incomplete remain without including collimation in the orbit plane and also polarization which is generally elliptical though linear and circular are also not untypical yes methods analytical reveal a feature typical the radiations polarized in general elliptical The beams of radiation that emerge around the ring are channeled down the beam lines, which are vacuum pipes that bring the light where monochromators and sample chambers stand with dedicated scientists expectantly on hand. The data they demand come forth at their command, a product of facilities the finest in the land. The scintillating science that the SRS supports expands the reputation of the staff that man the ports. Their pioneering papers in the scientific press are eloquent example of the synchrotron success. Their papers effervesce with first class work no less, which renders their competitors extremely envious. To take but one example from the topographic field. A method whereby lattice strains in crystals are revealed. A surface state acoustical in lithium niobate was imaged stroboscopically as it traversed a plate. A piezoelectric plate of lithium niobate disclosed in X-ray topographs how saw waves propagate. Or take one more rewarding application which persuades more physicists and chemists to appear here. That's AIDS, emission of electrons from materials by light, an angular analysis on how they put to flight. Those EDCs, that's right, provide a rare insight on surface states and such like that the photons can excite. Such golden opportunities our beamlines now provide for pushing back the frontiers of science far and wide. Engrossed in this our working lives we'll diligently spend until that final shutdown we'll reluctantly attend. When at the rainbow's end, electrons cease to bend and on our fabled synchrotron, black darkness will descend. Here's to the SRS. Cheers.